when I first started, people contacted me from all over the world. It was a pretty steep learning curve, like how to organise this stuff. It just sort of kept on getting bigger and bigger until I was like getting 200 emails a day. I might get a fine, arrested, jailed. If I don't do what I'm doing, then people will die. It's straight from the script of Hollywood movie Dallas Buyers Club. An Australian man in his 60s is taking on a global pharmaceutical company. Greg Jeffries has supplied more than 100 Australians who have hepatitis C with life-saving drugs from India because he says the Australian medical system has failed them. Somewhere in Queensland. <laughs> at, at, the, at the house in Princess Street. So I've always been very healthy, you know, like as I said, uh, even in my drug years, I, you know, I, I surfed a lot, I was outdoors. I've really not had any health issues until sort of when I hit uh, my 50s. Then I started to get these mysterious things going wrong with my health, which none of the doctors could figure out. And suddenly my health just went bang. Suddenly I started getting nosebleeds, no reason, my gums started bleeding. If I scratched myself, I would bleed. And very quickly the doctor did the tests and, and I discovered I had hepatitis C. It took a lot of talking to specialists, to the hepatitis nurse at the hospital, to figure out that actually I'd got it back when I was 20 using intravenous drugs. It was good to know how I got it. And then, of course, the next big question is how you get rid of it. A new drug is curing hepatitis in just weeks. It is being called the best drug launch in history. A miracle drug, it actually cures hepatitis C. I did research and, and you soon discover that, wow, there's a really good cure available, really effective, really safe. But then, of course, I found out that it was more than $100,000 Australian to buy it, which is you know, the price of a house here. This new treatment had just been uh, released in the USA. Everyone was talking about it, and mostly people were talking about the fact that it was so expensive. And you soon discover that the pill that you have to pay $1,000 per pill for actually costs less than 50 cents to make. And it's at that point you start to say, well, there's something wrong with the whole system. But they don't care if people die because they can't afford the drug. They just want top dollar. What are you doing, guys? What are they? It looks like that. What are you doing, guys? <laughs> Morning. Morning. Hi Thomas. Hello. <laughs> You're needing hep C treatment, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been working on it in Sweden for uh, yeah, uh, two over two two years now. But in Sweden, they have only get the medicine for the people that's you know really, really, really sick. I can ship uh, direct to, uh, to you in Sweden, so you, you would have the treatment in basically two weeks. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And the... It's amazing. I'm really glad. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Goodbye. Slow lara. What would you have thought about for mat today? What to have hep C, you know, your blood is infected, can infect other people in your life, like my daughter, like my wife. I'm afraid of my shaving stuff. I don't want my daughter to get my toothbrush. It feels like your blood is can hurt people. I know I got my hep C 
of dirty needles, sharing with other people. You know, I didn't care about anything. You know, I I know the risk about sharing needles, but I didn't care. I just cared about the next fix. So the Hep C is the last thing for me to deal with, to feel normal. In that way, you know, I've fought the addiction. I've fought uh, a lot of problems in my life, you know, but. The Hep C is still there and dragging me backwards, you know. Ja, jag fixar lite kaffe. Jag fixar kaffe. Gott. I've seen what how sick you can get if you live with the hepatitis C for too long. My father has had it for a long time and he was like, you know, a walking dead. Ja. Att du mår fruktansvärt dåligt, att du är frustrerad och eh, vansinnig över de här människorna som sitter på mediciner men som tycker att eh, människoliv är mindre värt än pengar då. Jag menar, varför inte ta med sig en pistol och gå in och, 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 och rensa lagret på sån medicin? I just starting look up on the internet. I always talked to my father about this and he. I've, I've seen on the internet you can buy some medicine from overseas. I've read all the stories and every story, everybody's talking about Greg, Greg, Greg. And he told me that he can fix the transportation from India. That's what too good to be through, you know. you do the research you discover that India makes a huge amount of pharmaceuticals that get sent all over the world as generics, you know. I started to find people in India who could ship from India to different parts of the world because they've been doing that with generic HIV drugs. Amongst them, I got an email from Parag, who was, you know, a licensed exporter of pharmaceuticals, and offered to help in any way he could. The sources are very reliable, and they say that uh, Epcosa brand is going to be approved. And so we had to figure out what the rules were in all the different countries for for getting generics into people. Say Serbia, we just the first shipment we just sent there, it got seized. Basically, we were doing a country by country assessment. We would use third-party volunteers in other countries where the rules were better. So we just figured out ways of getting around every blockage that we can. So nowadays, I can guarantee delivery to absolutely every country on Earth. Hey, Hi. hey how are you? Fine. Nice Ooh. meeting you. Long time, huh? Long time, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The present for uh, the patients. For the patients. <laughs> <laughs> Just Not like to me. open it and see it, yeah? So, uh, me and R uh, were introduced by Greg about a year ago. R was probably, you know, looking to source the Indian licensed generics. A big reason for us to collaborate with a lot of these bios clubs which might have a uh, lot of legality in their way of operations but definitely on, on a ranking of morale they have a much more higher ranking as compared to a big pharmaceutical company. I come uh, in India and I take the meds from here, the generics. I give to the patient the treatment. The treatment is very well. I, uh, I choose to don't, to don't show my face because I need to protect me and my family. It is very risky for me because of the custom, you know, how you pass with the treatment. If they stop me, I tell it for me and my family.
I'm very relieved. I'm very happy. Nothing has happened, and I passed the border, the custom, and everything, and all is okay. In our country, we have a lot of poor people who don't have money for treatment, who wait at the doctor for the, some prescription, something. Some people receive it, but in the last moment, in the high fibrosis, and it's already too late. About a million people every year going through this. You know, there's about a million new infections every year. One of the very early things that I had to uh, deal with was the fact that in a lot of countries what I was doing was illegal, I was smuggling drugs. And uh, that caused me some concern, but the reality is a high portion of the people who I get medication to will die if they don't have the medication. So ethically, morally, I have no problem with breaking the law in countries where it is illegal to do what I'm doing. I became aware that, uh, that I was treading on the toes of Big Pharma very early in, in the piece. I got a letter from Gilead, and it was a cease and desist official legal letter. Suddenly I couldn't access my, uh, my blog website anymore, that the password had been changed. I said, well, yeah, could you tell me what the complaint was about? No. Uh, is there anything I can do to fix it up? No. Using Gilead's own documents, the evidence shows that the company pursued a calculated scheme for pricing and marketing its hepatitis C drug based on one goal, maximizing revenue regardless of the human consequences. It's time to uh, talk to Gilead, the manufacturer of Savali. It is an outrage that you have a company whose profits have soared in the last few years. Uh, their revenues have doubled, I believe, in the last year. They've come up with the drug. They are charging the general public $1,000 a pill for that drug. The original price was um, were about the same as the therapies that were currently available. Um, the therapies that were available five years ago had about a 5 to 10% cure rate and were quite toxic. Um, we saw uh, the new regimens, Savaldi being one of them, as being more effective, much more effective, 80, 90, 95 percent, and much safer. So we thought pricing at around about the same level was something that made sense. Actually, what we found is that so many patients needed treating very quickly that the total cost to the health systems um, was a lot. So we sat down with patients, with governments, with payers, um, and looked at a more reasonable price so more patients could receive therapy um, quickly. The cost of research and development is very high and for every drug that we research and bring forward to market there are many others that don't make it. So those costs are extremely high. Um, somewhere in the system you know, we need to recover those costs so we can invest in more good research. Um, and so really the pricing model, um, the price did start higher um, and it's now at a more um, you know, affordable level so that globally we can get much more rapidly to elimination. They made all their costs back in the first year that they released it. It's like the discovery of penicillin, but the difference is the guy who discovered penicillin didn't patent it. He said, this drug is so important and will save so many lives. And these direct acting antiviral drugs are, the, are, are just as revolutionary as penicillin. They, the difference is that the person who owns this technology has, holds onto it with, with great avarice and, and will not share it and will not give it away. Well, patents are very important. They give and, and patents for anything that, that people sell. You, know, you have made a, sign, a scientific discovery in this case that's bringing a significant benefit to patients, um, uh, and, and, and we need um, revenue to, re to fund more research, and that's what we do. We bring many more innovations forward. So the patent system protects that economic model. Um, I think it's our responsibility to make sure 
um, that we understand how a medicine will be used in this case to cure patients and make sure that that's something that's available. So we never want barriers to patient access. But it's being priced so high that no one can afford it. Uh, and it's only because we've got places like India that you know, people like me, I mean, I'd be dead now if it wasn't for the Indian generics. So, ja, äntligen paketet Lite. kommer. Jag får se på det. Oh, wow. Ja, äntligen. Ja. Det här paketet har känts ju helt sjukt. Jag är jävla glad. Ja. En vacka. Ja. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to see what the difference I will feel in my life because I don't know what the hepatitis C is causing in my life. Now I have this strange pain in my legs and in my muscles. The problem with the cost of medication is not just in the hepatitis C area. Um, so it's in cancer, for example, diabetes, all, all kinds of areas. And in all cases, the cost of medication is crippling health systems around the world. It really does need a revolution because at the moment, these medical corporates have so much wealth, so much money, they're able to corrupt the systems, they're able to influence politicians, they're able to pay lobbyists, and in doing so, they're bleeding the health systems of the world dry. To me, the problem is simple, greed.